my turn. There we go. You didn't have a special, sweetheart? No special. Okay. Yep. Okay. That'll be good. All right. My Savior Staff is our booklet that we're working tonight. Where, where's yours, Janie? You have, yours has a name on it. And I thought, I, I haven't seen it lately. Because because you did, it was here. but Because I kept using it in order to, so I can remember. So that I can. So that I can uh, remember where, where we are. One, two. Okay. Them to share. Okay. And then, do uh, you need need one? Oh, you're getting one for them. Okay. But I know yours is here somewhere. I know it is. But I have. I don't think I picked yours up, Janie. Where did yours go? Huh. Well, sorry. I can't believe that it's not here because it was here before. Tuck, do you need one? You have yours? Trash can. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Okay, we have uh, booklets tonight for the study of uh, Romans, my shepherd's staff, and it's uh, staff stands for Savior's tool, admonishing faithful followers. And I'm going to read Romans 8, so it'll be a little bit before anybody reads, sweetheart. You could probably take a seat. This booklet can be found on the internet. I worked with Dana to uh, see if we can get this onto the internet. So those of you that are listening by way of uh, uh, the internet or on TV, however you work it out, you can download this and fill it in, as well as the study for the Sunday school hour off the website from florencebaptistchurch.com. Yep, so, and that's what Dana said, that's where it's going to be. It can't be on Facebook. So it's on it's on our website, uh, florencebaptistchurch.com. Welcome to pick it up and uh, print it off and uh, be able to fill in the blanks. And uh, today we're on lesson three, looking at Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter 8. So I want to read Romans chapter 8. I know I'm jumping ahead a couple chapters, but this one here is, uh, we're going to be covering this in this third lesson. And uh, let's look at Romans 8. So as you're turning there to Romans chapter 8, first of all, we looked at the purifying staff dealing with salvation. Trust in Christ as our personal Savior. And once we're saved, purified. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the next lesson was the powerful staff, which deals with justification and propitiation and redemption and righteousness and, and uh, redemption. It's just, just filled with so many exciting facts and uh, things. And then the one that we're looking at today is the preserving staff. And that, that one is really exciting. Romans chapter 8 is, uh, is a powerful portion of scripture. It's one of those that we can cherish and uh, think of and remember. I go there quite often when dealing with individuals who do not believe in eternal security, thinking that their salvation is not secure, it's a powerful portion of scripture and one that's very encouraging. So I'm going to read through Romans chapter 8 as we get started here. Beginning at verse 1, the word of God says this, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. 
For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. Redemption set free. I've been purchased from the slave market of sin. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is, the in, is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also, listen to this, shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Wow, that's exciting. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself heareth witness or beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and if children then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creation was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruit of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience Wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we shall pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? 
It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, for height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Wow, that is powerful. I like to mention when you look at verse 38, it says that even angels won't separate us from God. I like to place in there Satan, because Satan can't even separate us. And then down here, there are some people who say, well, well, you can change your mind and, and you can break free and, and uh, you, you can do things that, that you can lose your salvation. But, but look at verse 39, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature. Now, that includes you. You can't even break free and uh, break free from God's love. Uh, salvation is eternal. And uh, we want to look at this lesson today. This is one that I really cherish. I have spent hours, I mean hours, with people that did not believe in eternal security. As a teenager, it gave me opportunities to study the Word of God myself and to come up. And uh, whoops, uh, Tuck's got a question. Yes. That's right. That's right, it is, yep. That's why I mention him there too, because some people think, well, Satan can cause me, but, but he's right there. He, he's a fallen angel, Lucifer, a beautiful angel. You know, it's interesting how, how they, uh, they like to um, depict Satan. Have you seen those commercials lately? You know, that commercial of, uh, of 2020? Uh, it, it, <laughs> I mean, he, he <laughs> his face could stop a bus. I mean, he's just... <laughs> But but that's not what Satan looks like. He's a beautiful angel, beautiful angel, and uh, he's deceptive. He he's a trickster. He's a seister, and he hates everything about God. And he's going to do anything and everything to destroy the believer. So we want to look here today at eternal security. Uh, would someone be willing to read? And it's up here. Our K verses: Romans eight thirty eight and Romans eight thirty nine. I just read them, but somebody like to read through them real quick. Uh, Kevin will. Janie, you fell asleep back there. Yep, we need the mic. Kevin said he'll read these right here. So we need the mic so that uh, Tuck can hear it too because he wants to take part in the service as well. I mean, Dana. Dana, yeah. Tuck, well, Tuck's back there, but he wants... You betcha. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Praise the Lord. So let's dive into it real quick. Here's the first question. Have you ever been told that you can lose your salvation? Has anybody ever told you that? Yes. And what do they say will cause you to lose your salvation? Before I put my list up, let's have some of you mention some of the things that uh, you have been told can break your relationship with Christ. Sinning, okay, sinning. yep, sinning, yep. yep. But how about specific sin? Never been told. None? Nope, never been told that. Cussing, yeah, using the Lord's name in vain. That's number three, what, Jay? Doubt. Doubt, oh, doubt. That, that's a strong one, and that, that's something that I, I want to mention, too. You know, adultery, yes, yep. But but doubt, doubt and things like that is... is uh, you know, when, when you think about a believer that's struggling with eternal security, it's a, a lot of it is because they're not growing in their walk with the Lord. They're not faithful in church. They're not uh, coming faithfully. They, they start missing, you know, just like a used car. It, they start, a car starts missing before it totally quits, right? 
And uh, so we, we don't want to start missing. We want to be faithful uh, when we can be, when we're healthy. And, uh, of course, if we have a job that takes the place of church, that uh, we do have to go to job. We, or we, we need to pay our bills. But, uh, but to, to, to be considerate and faithful to the things of God. So here's the list that I want to put up that's on the blanks here. First of all is stealing. Some people think, you know, if I steal and, and take things that aren't mine, and, and that's even time, you know, anything, time, like like uh, convincing a fellow employer to check you out an hour after you've already left. That, that's stealing. That's taking money that doesn't belong to you. Lying, telling things that aren't true, and, and uh, lying, you know, so so subjective because some people think, well, you know, telling a little white lie is okay, isn't it? No. God says no, and then there's cheating, and uh, how about this one, swearing, using the Lord's name in vain, that was mentioned tonight already, and then how about murder, <laughs> that, that one certainly is is uh, is one that, that you hear a lot, there are people who even say if you commit suicide, that you will lose your salvation and not go to heaven, and uh, that that's not true, that's not what scripture says, uh, murder and taking your life is, is not subject to losing one's salvation and it's because salvation is secure it is forever and uh, let's look at the next one what does the word eternal mean can someone quote john three sixteen or read it for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life everlasting life so in the blank goes forever Forever. It's not just a little while. It is forever. It is eternal. Um, salvation doesn't end just for a couple weeks. It's, it's forever, for eternity. So that's preserving staff, that we're preserved. The next one, uh, how are we doing? Is everybody caught up to me? We can keep going. Here we go. So the question is this. Does eternal security really matter? And I say, yes, it does matter. Because without eternal security, listen to this, without eternal security, it would affect, first of all, my assurance of salvation. You know, how, how could you say, well, I know that I'm born again. Let's look at 1 John 5.13. Someone willing to look that up? Okay, we've got three of them here. 1 John 5.13, John 17.11, and 12. And a portion of scripture that I really cherish. This, this is awesome. And that's John chapter 10, verses 28 and 29. So who would be willing to read 1 John 5, 13? I'm over here to Tuck. Over to Tuck. He's got that. He's going to yep. 1 John 5, 13. And then, uh, and then uh, Kevin, how about uh, John 17, 11 and 12? Oh, okay, Nancy. And then someone got John 10. You got John 10? Mom does? Okay, so talk, go ahead and read First John 5, 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Very good, that ye may know. I, th I mean, that is so powerful. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to guess. You can know without a shadow of a doubt that you have eternal life, that you're born again, that you're bound for heaven. You can know for sure. There are a lot of people in the world today who say, you know, you can't know. You, you just do the best you can. And just maybe when you stand before God, you'll make it to heaven. Nobody knows for sure. But scripture says you can know. You can know without a shadow of a doubt. And then John 17, 11 and 12. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep thou thine own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Yes, none of them are lost. They are in the Savior because of what Christ has done. And then John 10, this is the one that I cherish, is John 10, verses 28 and 29. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So it says that, that we are in the Savior's hand, 
and that nobody could pluck us out of the Savior's hand. And wrapped around the Savior's hand is the Father's hand, and, and nobody could pluck us out of his hand either. We, we, are, we are covered doubly. We're, I mean, we're in the Savior's hand. Have you ever put something like a coin in your hand and had a child see if they could pry it out? You know, they just can't do it. Now, if you get somebody that's really strong, they can push your wrist and finally get your hand open. But, but a little child is not going to be able to open up that hand. And that is, we are in the Savior's hand and the Father's hand is wrapped around his hand. We are secure. We are secure in Christ. So my assurance of salvation. Can you imagine trying to witness to somebody and you're not even sure if you're saved yourself? It's really hard to do. You know, scripture tells us, yes, you can know. And I got a little bit ahead of myself, but let's keep going. Number two is my assurance of God's forgiveness. First John 2, 2. Nancy has that one. And he is the prop propitiation for our sins and not ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Yes. So my assurance of God's forgiveness and that word <clears throat> propitiation. Anybody remember what propitiation means? It's a covering. Yeah, it's a covering. But what's the little phrase I always use? Anybody catch it? For propitiation? God's righteous demands satisfied. God's righteous demands are satisfied. Because of what Christ has done. Because God demands perfection. God demands that sacrifice to be perfect. And, and, and nothing else would fall short. His righteous demands would not be satisfied. But because of who Christ is and what he's done for us, his righteous demands are satisfied through Christ. So my assurance of God's forgiveness. And then my salvation by faith. Galatians 2.16. To reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. Galatians 2.16. Is that right? That's chapter 1. 61. Galatians 2, 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Yes, very good. And then Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are ye saved through faith, is another portion of scripture there. So my, my assurance of salvation... Uh, my, my assurance of God's forgiveness and my salvation by faith, it would affect all those things. And it would also affect my witnessing. Acts chapter 8, remember we looked at that, I think it was last Sunday. Yeah, last was it last Sunday? Acts chapter 8, isn't that the portion of scripture where Paul and Silas? Am I wrong? I might be wrong. Yeah. Yeah, Acts 8. Persecution, yep, Acts. We're not going to read through the whole portion of Scripture, but I, 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 I thought I remembered what. And then, of course, 1 Thessalonians 4.13, Acts chapter 8. Yeah. Can you go back one for a minute? Yeah, there we go. Go back one more. Oh, okay. My salvation by faith. And then uh, my witnessing. It would affect my witnessing. It, it, it's kind of hard because here you are, you're witnessing to somebody. And you say, you know, you need to trust Christ your Savior. But, but don't forget, you could lose it. You know, you, you know who, who would want to accept it if they knew that they could lose it? I mean, it, it's eternal. It's secure. And uh, it would really it would affect some, one's witnessing. To, to witness, to tell somebody about Christ. and to, Yes, sir? Okay, so, yep, and then Galatians 2.16, we're not going to read the whole chapter. Yeah, that, that is uh, Saul and the death. Yes, Galatians 2.16, that's what she just read. Okay, and then number five is my confidence facing, this is a big one, facing death, facing death. So without eternal security, it would affect all these things, my witnessing, uh, facing death, you know, there are a lot of people that we counsel and talk with that, that are facing death. And, and uh, t 
to question, you know, am I really gonna, going to make it? But we have assurance in knowing who Christ is and what Jesus Christ has done for us, that we can face death knowing that God's word is true. So 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through 18. Who would like to read those? I got it. You got it? All right. Tuck's got it. Chunk right there. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Yes, therefore, comfort one another. He referred to those which have no hope. And there are a lot of people in the world today who have no hope, no peace, no joy, because they've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. So, so my statement is, is that, yes, eternal security really does matter. And we can go through, back through it real quick. Look at this. Without eternal security, it would affect my assurance of salvation, my assurance of God's forgiveness, my salvation by faith. It would affect my witnessing, and it also affect my confidence facing death. Now, that's a lot to destroy, a lot to pull away. Our hope is in Christ, and we are secure. We know without a shadow of a doubt that salvation is eternal and that we will spend eternity with Christ. In John 3, 16, it shares with us that, uh, whoops, the batteries just went. Uh, it shares with us that salvation is eternal and that salvation is a gift. For God so loved the world that he gave. And, you know, if it's a gift, that means in order for it to be a gift, that it has to be free. And it's eternal. In order for it not to be a gift, there has to be a condition. Like, for instance, if, if someone says to you, I'm going to give you this gift, but you have to do this for me, it's no longer a gift, right? As soon as there's conditions with it, it's no longer a gift. But salvation is a gift, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And it's by Christ's love and the gift that he's given to us. It's no longer a gift if there's a condition for it. And salvation is a gift. He has given to us a gift of eternal life. So we'll wait until next Sunday to continue on. This is really exciting study. So come back next Sunday night. We'll go back through some of this stuff again. But then look and continue on here in Romans 2. Yes, there you go. Yes. Yep. So I could plug that in. You are welcome. Let's. Thank you, Dana. Yes. That's right. It is. Look at how, look at how far the, uh, yes. the suicide rate has gone up. Yes. Oh, yeah. Because there's no hope. Right. No hope and no peace. That's right. Yep. So Kevin's going to come and lead us in a closing hymn. And then close us in a word of prayer. So be sure to be back next Sunday. Right, come back next Sunday. Please stand and turn to hymn number, I think it's 162. Huh? You want to do 163? Oh, no. Okay. Verses 1, 2, and 4. Here we go. Come every soul by sin oppressed. There's mercy with the Lord. And he will surely give you rest by trusting in his word. Only trust him. Only trust him. Only trust him now. He will save you, He will save you, He will save you now. Verse 2. 
For Jesus shed his precious blood, rich blessings to bestow. Plunge now into the prison flood that washes white as snow. Only trust him, only trust him, only trust him now. He will save you, he will save you, he will save you now on the last. Come then and join this holy band and on to glory go to dwell in that celestial land where joys immortal flow. Only trust him, only trust him, only trust him now. He will save you, he will save you, he will save you now. Amen. Amen. Good singing. Ooh. Now then. Please bow your heart. Father God, we thank you so much for, for your messages and the messages that you send through Pastor Silcott. Uh, we just appreciate the Silcott so much, Father. We, they are a blessing to this church, and we thank you for them. As we go throughout our week, Father, we ask that you, that you guide us and, and, and you give us the strength and the wisdom that we need to get through and to, to just put in our hearts the ones that you are um, convicting, Father, that we can help them find you and, and find the truth about you, your saving grace. Help us to lead those to to your salvation and to this church, Father. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. You right. are dismissed. You are dismissed. Have a wonderful week. Thanks for Is this still on? How do we turn it off?